Hello, my name is Veronica Carter. I'm one of the district math coaches for the county. And I'm affectionately known as Coach Carter. I'm very excited to be here with you. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on comparing fractions based on benchmarks 0, 1 half, and 1 whole. So let's look at these two fractions. Which one is more? How do you know? What do they have in common? Yes, I see it too. They have the same denominator, the bottom number. So when the denominators are the same, normally the numerator tells us something about whether which one is bigger or not. Well, we're going to be focusing on how the benchmarks relate to some of this information that we already know. Let's start with the benchmark one half. We all have experienced one half, a half of a cake, a half of a pie, um, half of a bag of Skittles, um, half of a rope. We've all experienced one half. But what does that look like in relationship to other fractions? Let's start with an equivalent fraction of one half. If we have one piece out of two um, parts of a whole, that's one half. But we can also take that um, part that we're focusing on, the pink section, and split that even more and split the other side so that now we would be focusing on two of the four pieces. So two fourths. Then we can partition it in a different way where we have it's um, partitioned into three parts for a half and three parts that are, um, for the other half. So that would represent three of six, so three six. It could be um, subdivided even more into four of eight parts. But notice that the pink section has the same amount. Whether we partition it more or not, the section is still a half of that whole. So one half is equal to two fourths, is also equal to three sixths, which is also equal to four eighths. And we could go on. Let's see what the, and there's a pattern here. Let's see what it is. What can we tell about this in relationship to the numerator and the denominator of a fraction concerning a half? One and two. That's our first one. What is that relationship? Two and four. Three and six. Four and eight. Yes, you have it. The numerator is half of the denominator, which makes sense because we're talking about the value of half of something. So whether we had a denominator that was 100 or if it's just four, we're talking about the portion that's half of that. So half of the numerator. So one is half of two. Two is half of four, three is half of six, and four is half of eight. So now we know all the fractions in the world that are equal to a half because anything that's equal to a half, the numerator is half of the denominator. Got it? I think you do. Let's go on. So let's sort some fractions based on this new knowledge of fractions equivalent to one half. Let's look at this. We have some pictures at the bottom that we're dealing with. Let's start with the first one. The first one has three orange smiley faces and one white face that's faded out. We're gonna only focus in on the shaded ones this time. So we're talking about the three yellow. Three fourths is the fraction that's represented here. So three fourths. We just learned that if something is half, then it um, it would be the numerator being half of the denominator. But what's half of four? Half of four is two. So three fourths is going to be more than two fourths. 
The denominator is the same. The bigger the numerator, the bigger the value of the fraction. So three fourths is going to be greater than a half. If it was two fourths, it would be equal to a half, but it's three fourths, so it is greater than a half. And so we would um, drag it over there to greater than half. Then our next fraction, our next fraction is two eighths. Okay? Half of eight is right, four. Four is half of eight. So that fraction would be four eighths if it was equal. Well, it's two eighths, and two eighths is less than four eighths. Two eighths is less than four eighths. So that means that it is going to be less than half. And we can see it here. The pink is definitely less than half of that whole. So we would move that to less than one half. Our last picture we have here are arrows. We have three green arrows and three white arrows. So our shaded arrows are three, three of six. So we have three six. So half of six is I knew you knew it. It is three. Three six would be equal to one half. All right, so you can understand that. Great. Now we're gonna look at comparing fractions based on the benchmarks zero, one half, and one whole. Now let's think about that. If it's zero, it's going to be close to zero, right? If you're talking about basing it on a benchmark zero. So we're looking at things that are closer to zero, things that are closer to one half, and think um, fractions that are closer to one whole. So fractions that are closer to zero, fractions that are closer to one half, and fractions that are closer to one whole. All right. So let's look at it. Automatically, if you were looking at these pictures that are given, you probably already know which ones go where based on the pictures. But let's talk about more about the, the meaning of the fractions. Let's start with the first one here. We have six out of 10. So six tenths, okay? Well, half of um, 10 is gonna be five. But well, six is very, very close. Look at that picture, six tenths almost looks like half of that um, whole, doesn't it? So in this case, we know that if it was on this number line, that it would be closer to one half. It's going to be more than a half, but it's going to be close to one half. Okay? And so we would move that into closer to one half. All right? So now let's look at the um, next fraction. The next fraction, we have four stars out of the set of five. So we have four fifths. Now four fifths, how many of those stars look like they're uh, a shining? We, we have about almost all of them shaded in. So it looks like most of them are shaded in. So this is probably gonna be greater than half. And this is a tricky one. Five. Half of five is what? Well, we know half of four is two. We know half of six is three. But five is an odd number, so half of five is two and a half. Well, four is greater than two and a half fifths. So two and a half fifths would be half, um, but four fifths is going to be greater than that. So that's going to be closer to one whole. You got it. All right. Let's look at this next picture. We have one shaded in out of all of the six parts, okay? Only one shaded in of the six parts. Now, we already know that that's probably going to be this last one over here that says closer to zero. 
but let's just talk about it. What's half of six? Half of six is going to be three. So three six would be a, a fraction that's equivalent to one half, and it would fall on the number line right at a half. One um, six is going to be closer to zero because you have you're two six away from the half. All right, so we're going to move this into the closer to closer to zero section. Okay. All right. So now let's review what you've learned today. Fractions that are equivalent to one half when are equivalent to one half when the numerator's value is half the value of the denominator. Fractions can be compared based on their relationships with the benchmarks zero, one half, and one whole. I hope you've had fun. I have had a lot of fun with you. Enjoy the practice of benchmark fractions and enjoy life. Take care.